Okay, uh, welcome to another GCSE Geography Revision video. Uh, today, uh, a short guide to causes of tropical storms, causes and locations of tropical storms or form and formation as well. Okay, So, if we start off with um, the features of a tropical storm, when we're talking about tropical storms, we're talking about hurricanes, uh, cyclones and typhoons. Okay, And you can see this map on the board, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, if you can see the picture in the top left, uh, that's obviously a very common photograph, aerial photograph of what a tropical storm looks like and we can talk about the features being uh, very strong winds for our hurricanes, cyclones, typhoons, uh, heavy rainfall, uh, a period of low pressure, so a low pressure weather system, uh, very swirling cloud patterns formed by our sort of circular winds and then finally another feature of tropical storms as they make landfall, as they hit land, as they come in off the sea are storm surges, those very big waves cause so much damage in places like your case studies of uh, Haiyan, Myanmar and Katrina. Okay, So they're the features and we'll speak a little bit in a moment about how we, uh, how we actually end up with a tropical storm forming. Um, if at any point you want to make notes, obviously pause the video as we always say uh, so that you can uh, make, you know, make the notes that you need to. So if we look at the map, uh, our tropical storms are so called because they occur between the two tropics. Okay, that's a bit of common sense for you. So to the north, if there's the equator running through the middle of the uh, of the world there, and then to the north of that you've got the Tropic of Cancer, and the, to the south of that you've got the Tropic of Capricorn. And you can see, hopefully, you've then got this narrow band along which tropical storms will form. And um, over in uh, sort of central. Central America, the Caribbean, southern USA, uh, they are known as hurricanes and they will tend to start out in the Pacific Ocean, in the Caribbean Sea and work their way inland, okay, usually hitting places like southern America, think about uh, Hurricane Katrina, places like uh, the Caribbean um, and also Central America that you can see here. You also see that hurricanes do tend to form on the west coast and then push outwards in the Pacific Ocean. We never hear about those because they don't cause any damage. Um, over in the Indian Ocean, so from sort of the eastern coast of Africa, running into the uh, western coast of Australia and up towards India and Bangladesh, we have our cyclones which tend to form in this area here and they will usually either push towards Madagascar as you can see with these arrows or they'll push towards India, uh, Bangladesh and one of your case studies if you used it was Cyclone Myanmar. And finally typhoons, typhoons tend to start in this area of the western Pacific Ocean, think about how this map works, okay, and they will push inwards towards the Philippines, Typhoon Haiyan, and then upwards towards Japan, and then into this area of southeastern Asia, and down towards northern Australia, okay, so that tends to be the location that you find them, if you get a question about, you know, describing the pattern, then obviously talk about the areas and give that place detail, give the names of the oceans, give the names of the seas, and give the names of the countries where they will uh, move towards, you know, where they're likely to be um, hitting, as it were. So, finally then, the formation of a hurricane, okay? If we do this in stages, yeah? So, a hurricane needs uh, warm air, okay? It forms out of like a, a warm air weather system, if you will, okay? So, what we need, first of all, is warm sea temperatures. Uh, sea temperatures of 27 degrees C, that number that we always bat around when we're talking about hurricanes, okay? And those warm seas allow warm, moist air to rise up off the surface of the ocean, okay? And that usually then creates an area of low pressure because what happens is the, that warm air with the moisture is sucked into the atmosphere and it meets cooler air which is coming down the other way, okay? And as that happens, the warm, moist air meets the cold, dry air, and we get these thick storm clouds. And there's the first part of our tropical storm formation, okay? Our storm clouds which give us our heavy rain, okay? And this process happens across the storm, as you hopefully you can see on the diagram, and that's why we get bands of clouds, okay? And um, that obviously the storm operates in with the eye of the storm in the middle, okay? So fast rising warm air, warm moist air, bringing moisture with it, meets the cooling, the cool air that's descending, gives us our storm clouds, okay? The air rises in a spiral movement and that's aided by rotating winds, okay? And those winds are rotating because they're the trade winds that meet between the tropics along the equator and they're coming in opposite directions and they're also coming on a curve because of the curvature of the earth. So they're coming in like that 
and they are spinning. If you had a question about the formation, then talk about how trade winds arrive on the equator in a spiral, you know, the curved motion that creates a spiraling pattern. That's probably all you need, okay? Uh, as we know, the thickest layer of cloud is known as the eye wall. That's the thickest bands in the sort of centre of the storm, and they tend to be the most powerful part of the hurricane, okay? So, to recap, we've seen what the features are, circular cloud pattern, thick clouds, heavy rain, strong winds, storm surges, we've looked at where they occur, and what do we need for a formation? Sea temperatures of 27 degrees, Warm moist air rising, meeting cool air descending, that creates our storm clouds and our, our heavy rainfall. Our trade winds converging on the equator in a curved motion, that creates our spiralling wind pattern, our spiralling uh, storm pattern. And then the water continues to provide the energy for the storm to build up. Once the storm hits the coast and moves inland, it loses all of that water and therefore it loses its energy and that's why our storms begin to lose their energy, lose their power as they move further inland. Thanks.